Okay, this, as you can see, is a deck of cards, right? Um, handheld camera today. So I can I can shuffle and I can pick cards and turn them. There's a three of swords reversed. Um, various other cards, seven of swords. There's a star. Okay, uh, I'm going to go to the front door uh, to make a particular point. Okay, this, as you can see, on the floor is a pair of shoes. And so um, I come in and I kick them off. These are the shoes that I normally wear. And it really doesn't matter. Some people might prefer them to be sort of lined up if I can do that. Hang on a minute. So that's them neatly side by side and there's a tray over there um, with other stuff on it. But it's only a pair of shoes and in many ways it really doesn't matter if um, the shoes are side by side and neat or if they're sort of upside down this is now the kitchen and uh, as you can see these are some packets of dog food and i can put them one on top of the other right but it really doesn't matter if they're one on top of the other if they're upside down you know because it's just dog food okay next up is the basement there is a point to all this and it will be revealed in a okay this next bit uh, this is a speaker that kept connected to my computer and I'm going to play you a few seconds of Everlong by the Foo Fighters and if you've ever played music you know that it's better when it's loud okay so here we go and uh, click uh. <laughs> And so that's that's music, right? And it's better loud. Okay, so just before I begin, I want to say a couple of things. One is I have this mailing list now um, for a newsletter. If you want to join it, you have to go to the website and um, send me an email and um, I'll add you to the list. The other thing is I would sort of like to use Facebook more. So if you want, send me a Be My Friend thing or friend invitation rather at facebook and i'll uh, i'll accept it and then um as i've got things that i'm in the works and i can make announcements then you're going to be informed about them so i'm, I'm calling this how to get the correct how to get correct results every time with tarot cards and this is because i've been seeing and reading information recently that i think is inaccurate or that it's misleading and is going to get you off track even though I still think that the tower will pretty much give you the correct answer um, no matter what happens but I think it's important and it's valuable to set things up to help the process along um, and if you go back to cards here um, this is the writer deck as you probably already know and if we ask what, what, are, we, what are we trying to do with this and the thing is, with tarot cards, we want to know the future before it happens, right? Or we want to understand the hidden reasons why things are happening, things like that. And that is asking, a, if you think about it, it's asking a lot, right? We want to know the future before it's happened. It's not like we, we come home, we kick off our shoes and leave it at the front door, or we set out some packets of dog food. That really doesn't matter. But here... We're taking cards with coloured pictures on them and shuffling them and choosing one or two or however many we choose. And we want that picture to tell us the future. So, and if you think about think about the influences on us. We've got influences from the past when you'd, let's say, you had a bad experience and that coloured your opinion of things and maybe made you look at yourself in a, in a negative way, right? Or you listen to the news on TV or in a newspaper and... You know, it's all doom and gloom and people are dying and there's predictions about earth climate change and the rest of it so that, you know, species are dying out. It's all terrible. Um, so uh, we, we've got that negativity and then we've got, by contrast, maybe our own hopes and wishes and our hopes and dreams. And somehow we want cards to somehow put all that together, all these outside influences and all the inner stuff that's going on with us, put it all together and t 
tell us how it's going to work for us or for our relationships in the future. And that, as I say, is asking an awful lot. So some people approach the tarot and they're kind of full of themselves. Um, and they think they know best, right? So they can control a reading and so they play loud music and they get drunk and then they say, hey, okay, let's take out the cards and here we've got, I'm going to tell your future and and uh, yes, you're going to get fired. The ace of batons reversed and um, uh, yes, you're going to be in a fight and so on. So they do that kind of thing and making predictions. And so somehow the atmosphere isn't right and I wouldn't take much or trust a reader who, under those circumstances. But at the same time, um, if you're at a loud party and somebody you're talking to is troubled or upset and is sincere in wanting a different take on what to do or how, how things are going to work out, and if you can find a quiet spot, a quiet corner, and talk about cards, then that's different, I think. Even though there's noise and aggression in the atmosphere around you, um, somehow it's not ideal but I think that the tarot is going to answer you correctly because of the the attitude of the two people involved and I, I just said I think that that atmosphere isn't ideal and I think that's the key word and so when we come to reading cards we should take um, time to set up the ideal or close to ideal conditions and then read for ourselves and other people so in a way, the opposite of being full of yourself um, and thinking you know it all is being humble. And I think that being humble is the best state of mind to be in when it comes to reading cards. Um, th this doesn't mean that you, you think you're useless or that you know nothing or that you're just a doormat and the tar it's okay for the tar to walk all over you. It's not that kind of sort of false humility. It's more thinking... Uh, here, I've got this. Okay, it's a bit like this is all intelligence, right? And this is my little bit. So, intelligence is, is huge, and my own little part of it is quite small, but um, it's a lot bigger than I am. But um, if I can use what I've got the best I can then my intelligence and understanding is going to grow over time and I'll do better as I improve. So, with all that in mind, what is the ideal? And I'm going to tell you what, um, it's my opinion, but it's also what I was taught, so it's not something that I just made up. So here we have cards, and this is a piece of silk, and I think it's important to keep cards wrapped in silk. Some people say it's because it protects them from negative vibrations. Um, that may or may not be true. Um, I just think it keeps cards clean and neat so they don't get sticky or dirty or messy. Because if you, if you just lay them on a, on a regular table, um, there's dirt on the table and maybe it's this, I don't know, there's muck or I don't, you know what I mean. Let's say you haven't washed the table properly and you put it on there. Over time it's going to get dirty. And I think cards are better when they're clean. These are old, but they're clean. But some people, and I don't understand it, but they like kind of sticky, dog-eared, ratty-looking cards. But um, I think it's better to have clean cards. So, Because um, I think, I, I'd sort of like to repeat, we're asking to know the future before it happens. We're not just kicking off shoes. Um, so, keeping cards in silk isn't that big a price to pay for quality information. So what's the ideal condition? I think that's basically it. Keep the cards wrapped in silk. When you're ready to use them, lay the silk on the table and put the cards on the silk. Right? And it keeps them clean. Um, some people burn incense. Uh, it's not something that I do because I don't like the smell. Some people burn candles. I, it's not something I do because, as far as I can tell, all candles do is burn up oxygen. So there's less in the room for me. And um, I think it's better to have as much oxygen as we can, as we like, have as much as we can have. So you unwrap the cards and you spread the silk and then you shuffle. Do what you want, of course, but I think the best way to shuffle is like this. That's what I was taught. Or like this if you want. 
and if the cards are a bit big, spread, the, spread them on the table and rearrange them like that. And I think that's good enough because you want to mix them and you can gather them up again and um, that's it. Um, it's the, 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 one, one thing I, I don't like is this riffle shuffle where you take like cards like this and you bend them and you put them together and I don't know why I just object to it but I think it's partly because a riffle shuffle like that um, it's fast and it's noisy because of the noise of the cards flipping together and I think it's better to be quiet and slow when it comes to shuffling and reading cards so the other thing is you should cut into three piles and turn one and gather them up again and while you're shuffling and whatever you should do that three times because three is the number of emphasis and the thing is you take your left hand and you go to the left you don't use your right and go to the right and this is because the moon is the feminine side or the feminine planet and rules the left and so what you want to do is um, shuffle and cut with the left hand it takes time to do this but it gives you time to think about the question or to discuss things with the questioner so that by the time you're reading cards you're you know more you're in a better state of mind or you 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 have greater understanding about what the question's about and how it should be answered so partly it takes time but also um, going to the left and using the left hand is the feminine side and it's the moon and the moon reflects right and the moon is gentle and if for no other reason use the, the left because you can look at the moon but you can't look at the sun so the moon is the left the sun is the right so stick with the moon so when you're ready when you've shuffled enough Let's say we just lay some cards this way and we want to know, okay, what's the first card or what's the, the answer to the question? And you pick one at random, right? And you, it's a good idea to have, lay cards face down first and then turn it and then start with that particular card and make as much sense of it as you can. If you look at it and nothing comes to mind, don't immediately pick another one. Make yourself work at it because otherwise you're just going to say what you know. But taking the time to figure out what this card means for that question is good exercise. And you're going to become stronger at reading if you take the time and if you work at it. And if you, you noticed, um, I turned the card this way from top to bottom. And some people object and say I've messed it up because I should have turned it from side to side. So... Turn it this way or turn it from side to side, whichever you prefer, but be consistent. And I think to, uh, to answer the question about top to bottom is wrong or right, what's happening with shuffling is the part of you that knows the answer is manipulating the cards to make sure that you choose the right one or that the cards appear in the right order, and it knows you're going to turn the card this way, top to bottom. So by turning it this way, you're not... It's, it's not like... The cards of a life of their own, right? And if you turn from top to bottom instead of side to side, you're going to mess it up. Because it's not like that. Cards themselves, these car pieces of card with pictures on it, they don't have power or energy that is independent of your energy and your power. So it really doesn't matter if you go from top to bottom or side to side, as long as you do it consistently. And that's it. And when we're finished, we gather the cards up and wrap them back in silk.